14 Signs That You Should Cut All Contact With Someone Stoicism Marcus Aurelius once said, Whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I am about to criticize? But what happens when someone's actions consistently harm your peace of mind? In today's video, we're diving into the 14 undeniable signs that it's time to sever ties and protect your tranquility. From undermining your values to toxic negativity, we'll explore how recognizing these signs is not only a matter of respect, but a fundamental aspect of Stoic wisdom. Join us at Stoic in Your Life as we dissect how cutting off detrimental relationships can lead to a more virtuous and serene life. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below as we embark on this journey towards self-preservation and stoic resilience. Let's delve into understanding when enough is enough. Number 1. Persistent Disrespect In the journey of life, encountering individuals who consistently exhibit a lack of respect is more than a breach of etiquette. It represents a fundamental threat to the foundation of any healthy and productive relationship. This disrespect may manifest in myriad forms. Persistent interruptions during conversations, destructive criticism, or a blatant disregard for your emotional well-being. Each instance chips away at the trust and security essential for a meaningful connection. When such behavior becomes a pattern, it's not just a red flag. It's a clarion call to reassess your involvement. Stoic wisdom teaches us that wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for kindness. Yet, when kindness is absent and disrespect prevails, protecting one's mental health becomes not only wise but necessary. To distance oneself from toxic interactions is an act of self preservation, not abandonment. It is an assertion of dignity and a commitment to one's well-being. Setting boundaries in such relationships isn't about building walls, but rather drawing lines that safeguard against emotional erosion. It is in these moments of firm boundary setting that we can foster environments where true respect can flourish and relationships can be genuinely nurturing. Marcus Aurelius once noted, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Thus, recognizing the necessity to retreat from disrespectful dynamics empowers us to take control over our emotional landscapes, preserving our self-esteem and preventing bitterness. This decision to sever ties is indeed a courageous one, reflecting a deep respect for oneself and a stoic acknowledgement that one's value is not to be compromised. By actively choosing to distance ourselves from harmful relationships, we reaffirm our worth and recommit to our values. It is a profound moment of personal growth, a renaissance of self-respect, where we learn to appreciate those who honor our dignity and refuse to settle for less. Such periods of reflection reinforce the role of respect in our lives and illuminate how its absence can unravel not only personal peace, but also the fabric of society at large. In today's world, where interactions can often be superficial and fleeting, recognizing and acting on these signs of disrespect is crucial for cultivating relationships that are both fulfilling and respectful. As we navigate through these challenges, remember the words of Seneca, As is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. Let this wisdom guide you to seek out and nurture connections that truly matter. Relationships built on mutual respect, kindness, and understanding, where every interaction enriches rather than depletes, where each moment spent is a testament to shared dignity and mutual growth. Number 2. Adverse Impacts on Mental Well-Being In the hustle of modern life, where relationships can be as fluctuating as the stock market, it's essential to recognize when a connection becomes more of a liability than an asset to our mental health. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that has surged in relevance today, instructs us to prioritize mental tranquility, seeing it as a crucial foundation for practicing virtue 
and leading a fulfilling life. However, maintaining this tranquility becomes a Herculean task when we are entangled in relationships that perpetually shake our emotional equilibrium. The stress, anxiety, and sadness that stem from these toxic dynamics are not just mental burdens. They often manifest physically, sapping our energy, disrupting our sleep, or even upsetting our digestion. These symptoms serve as glaring red flags, urging us to reassess the health of our relationships. Imagine yourself caught in a relationship where every interaction leaves you drained and doubtful. This isn't just an emotional drain, it's a call to action. Recognizing these signs is the first step toward empowerment. It's about acknowledging that it's not just permissible, but necessary to protect your well-being by setting boundaries or, if needed, cutting ties entirely. This decision, tough as it may be, is an act of profound self-care and a declaration of your right to a nurturing environment. Consider this. A friend of mine once shared how her relationship with a longtime colleague was marred by constant negativity and criticism. Despite her efforts to mend things, the relationship only drained her spirit and confidence. The turning point came when she decided to prioritize her mental health and stepped back from this toxic connection. The relief was immediate. She found herself more productive, happier, and, importantly, her sleep improved. Her story is a testament to the power of reclaiming your emotional space. Now you might wonder, how do I start making these changes? Begin by seeking support from friends, family, or professionals who can offer guidance and reinforcement as you navigate away from harmful dynamics. As you distance yourself from negative influences and actively choose healthier relationships, you not only safeguard your mental well-being, but also fortify your capacity to live fully and virtuously. Cultivating relationships that truly support and uplift you reinforces your commitment to a life of tranquility and virtue. Cornerstones of a genuinely good life. So, as you reflect on your own relationships, ask yourself, are they enhancing my peace and virtue or compromising them? Remember, every relationship in your life should contribute positively to your journey toward personal growth and tranquility. Make the choices necessary to uphold the quality of your life and relationships, for these are the true measures of a life well lived in accordance with Stoic wisdom. Number 3. Incompatible Values In the realm of Stoicism, where the cultivation of virtue and ethical living is paramount, the alignment of values between individuals is not just beneficial, but essential for nurturing genuine, meaningful relationships. When you constantly find yourself clashing over core values and moral principles, those fundamental beliefs that anchor your identity and guide your actions, such conflicts are not merely trivial disagreements, but deep-seated challenges that strike at the very heart of who you are and what you stand for. Imagine navigating life like a ship without a compass thrust into uncharted waters where each decision feels like an affront to your integrity and deeply held convictions. This constant confrontation with opposing values can erode your inner peace, slowly chipping away at your authenticity. Living in such a state of continuous ethical discord can feel like you are losing your way, causing a significant impact on your self-esteem and self-confidence. Attempting to adapt or accept these conflicting values might lead you to question the very essence of your principles. This internal turmoil can manifest in numerous ways, including stress, anxiety, and a profound sense of disconnection from both yourself and others around you. Hence, it's crucial to recognize these discrepancies in values early on and address them decisively. Have you ever felt that certain relationships rather than bringing peace instigate perpetual moral quandaries? It's vital to establish clear boundaries in our interactions to preserve our sense of identity and integrity. Sometimes, this might mean taking the difficult step of reducing or even ending contact with individuals whose values starkly oppose our own. Making such choices, though tough, is crucial for maintaining our authenticity and fostering a living environment that resonates harmoniously with our beliefs. As the revered Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. 
In the spirit of this wisdom, consider this. By choosing whom to include in your inner circle carefully, are you not only protecting your mental health, but also reinforcing your commitment to living a genuinely authentic life, one that's true to your principles? These decisions do not merely free us from the shackles of internal conflict, but also pave the way for deeper, more substantive relationships founded on true value alignment. So I pose this question to you. What steps can you take today to ensure that your relationships reflect and respect your deepest values? How can you ensure that the connections you nurture are those that bring peace and alignment to your life, not discord and disarray? If you've watched until now, you're ready to make pivotal decisions. Drop a comment with boundaries set to affirm your commitment to peace and clarity. Don't go yet. There's more empowering wisdom ahead. Number four, persistent exhaustion. In the journey of life, relationships ought to be sanctuaries of support and rejuvenation, not endless reservoirs of depletion. It is critical to recognize when interactions with someone constantly drain our vitality, leaving us diminished rather than enriched. This incessant drain manifests not just as emotional fatigue post-engagements, but also as a dwindling passion for previously joyful activities and an omnipresent cloud of sorrow or anxiety. These are telltale signs that a relationship is disproportionately consuming energy, thus affecting our mental and physical wellness adversely. In the context of our relationships, this wisdom underscores the importance of being selective about whom we invest our emotional energy in. If a relationship consistently saps your strength, it might be obstructing your path to personal achievements and the authentic expression of your abilities. Rather than catalyzing our growth, such relationships act as anchors, pulling us away from our goals of personal fulfillment. Recognizing when we are caught in a cycle of continual exhaustion is pivotal. Once this harmful pattern is identified, it's essential to critically reassess and possibly recalibrate or terminate these interactions. Setting healthy boundaries is not merely a precaution, it's a cornerstone of self-care. It ensures that our social circles genuinely contribute to our blossoming and help us strive towards being our best selves. In today's world, where professional and personal demands constantly compete for our attention, Maintaining relationships that recharge rather than deplete us is more important than ever. These bonds should empower us to face life's challenges with resilience and grace, not leave us struggling to gather our strength. As Marcus Aurelius wisely noted, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. This philosophy should guide us in nurturing relationships that enrich us enabling a life marked by growth and contentment. By prioritizing our well-being and carefully choosing our associations, we align closer with the Stoic ideal of living a balanced and thoughtful life. Number 5. Liberating Ourselves from Toxic Relationships In a world where our relationships profoundly influence our peace and growth, it's essential to understand when and why to sever ties that no longer serve our well-being. Have you ever felt drained or compromised by someone's presence in your life? This is often a sign that you're entangled in a manipulative relationship, a serious affront to the stoic values of authenticity and honesty, which underpin sincere and respectful human connections. Manipulation involves clever, often covert tactics aimed at controlling or influencing others, concealing real intentions while misleading the targeted individuals. Such behaviors not only distort your perception of reality, but severely hinder your freedom to make informed decisions. Think about it. When was the last time you felt unsure about your choice because someone clouded your judgment? Worse still, manipulation directly attacks your dignity and exploits your emotional vulnerabilities for someone else's gain. This not only deteriorates trust and respect, but also inflicts lasting damage on your self-esteem and emotional health. Imagine for a moment a friend who subtly guilt trips you into doing favors continuously. Initially, it might not ring alarm bells, but over time, this pattern can erode your self-worth and independence. 
So how do you reclaim your autonomy and integrity? First, by recognizing these manipulative behaviors. Whether it's through a friend's recurring insincerity or a partner's controlling nature, identifying these signs is the first step towards safeguarding your independence. Sometimes setting firm boundaries is enough. Other times, cutting off contact might be necessary. Let me share a story that illustrates this point vividly. Sarah, a graphic designer, found herself repeatedly undermined by a colleague under the guise of constructive criticism. Initially, she tolerated it, thinking it was part of her professional development. However, as the criticism became more frequent and increasingly personal, Sarah began to doubt her skills. It wasn't until a mentor pointed out the manipulative nature of these interactions that she decided to confront her colleague and set clear boundaries, eventually regaining her confidence and respect at work. Why does this matter? Because by rejecting manipulative influences, you not only protect your mental health, but also foster relationships that are based on mutual respect and genuine interaction. This step is crucial in maintaining your dignity and ensuring that your decisions align with your true self, enhancing your life's quality and your interactions. Now, I'd like to hear from you. Have you ever had to cut ties with someone because of manipulation? How did it impact your life afterwards? Remember, while it's vital to foster and cherish good relationships, it's equally important to recognize when a relationship is detrimental to your growth and peace. Each step you take towards freeing yourself from negative influences reaffirms your commitment to living authentically and respectfully. Subscribe for more insights, and let's continue nurturing our journey towards personal and relational integrity. Number 6. Lack of Trust In the realm of relationships, trust stands as the cornerstone upon which all meaningful connections are built. Whether it's with friends, colleagues, or intimate partners, the absence of trust can profoundly destabilize even the strongest bonds. Imagine, constantly, feeling on edge, unable to share your true thoughts and emotions. This perpetual vigilance not only hinders the growth of a deep, significant connection, but also fosters an atmosphere rife with tension and uncertainty. Each word and action from the other person might be scrutinized with suspicion transforming minor misunderstandings into potential crises. But why does this matter? Think about it. Without trust, how can there be any real depth to our interactions? Without the opportunity to be vulnerable, to share our innermost hopes, fears, and dreams, relationships often remain at a superficial level. And it's this vulnerability that cements a genuine connection allowing relationships to flourish and grow beyond mere functional exchanges. When faced with a persistent lack of trust, it's essential to take proactive steps towards restoration. This might involve engaging in open and honest discussions about each other's insecurities and doubts. How often do we hold back for fear of judgment? Establishing and adhering to clear commitments can also play a pivotal role in mending the fragile threads of trust. Sometimes, the path to healing may require the guidance of a mediator or therapist, especially when the rift runs deep. Marcus Aurelius once said, He who does not trust enough will not be trusted. This reflection from Stoicism nudges us towards the importance of rebuilding trust not only to mend damaged relationships but also to enhance our capability to engage genuinely with the world around us. Now consider this. Are you investing enough in your relationships to foster trust and openness? Remember, by choosing to rebuild trust, you're not just repairing a relationship. You're enhancing your own life, broadening your capacity to connect deeply and authentically with those around you. If you've stayed with us till now, you're truly mastering the art of discernment. Leave a comment below with I am Stoic Kai to affirm your commitment to wiser relationships. Don't go yet. More enlightening insights await in our next videos. Number 7. Despite Mistreatment Abuse in any of its manifestations, be it physical, emotional, verbal, or psychological, is a stark violation of the stoic values that uphold dignity 
and mutual respect among individuals. Such behavior not only inflicts immediate and severe damage on the victim, but also erodes the moral fabric of human interactions, undermining the very essence of respect and virtue. Stoic philosophy, with its emphasis on tranquility and moral integrity, advocates for a life free from turmoil and harm. Therefore, removing oneself from abusive relationships is not merely an act of self-care. It is a critical step toward maintaining personal serenity and integrity. Seneca, a renowned Stoic philosopher, once said, As long as you live, keep learning how to live. Applying this wisdom, distancing oneself from toxicity is imperative in learning how to live well. It is a declaration that one's well-being is paramount, and that enduring abuse is incompatible with the pursuit of a virtuous, balanced life. The process of leaving such relationships, however challenging, due to potential social isolation or emotional dependency, is crucial. It is important to leverage the support of friends, family, or professionals to navigate this difficult transition. Choosing to end abusive relationships is a courageous step towards recovery and self-affirmation. It allows one to reconstruct their life on foundations of self-respect and mutual regard, setting new standards for personal interactions and treatment. This proactive measure is not only about escaping a harmful situation, but also about fostering a commitment to higher ethical values and striving for a well-being that everyone rightfully deserves. In modern life, where complexities can sometimes blur the lines of appropriate behavior, such clarity and firmness in personal boundaries are essential. This stoic approach to relationships invites us to reflect deeply on our values and the environment we cultivate around us, ensuring they are conducive to our growth and well-being. Number 8. Lack of Development and Collaboration in a world where our personal and professional lives are more intertwined than ever, the relationships we maintain can profoundly influence our paths. Consider this. If your relationships lack growth and mutual support, they might not just be holding you back, they could be pushing you down. A stagnant relationship doesn't just limit your own development. It can also stifle your ability to contribute meaningfully to those around you. True growth in any relationship involves nurturing and promoting each other's aspirations and achievements. Without this, a relationship may turn one-dimensional, serving merely to fulfill basic social obligations or to maintain a facade, rather than fostering a genuine connection that can enrich both lives involved. It's essential to periodically examine the dynamics of your relationships. Ask yourself, do these relationships make me feel valued? Am I encouraged to grow and pursue my goals? If you find that mutual support and continual growth are lacking, it may be time to make some tough decisions. This doesn't necessarily lead to ending relationships abruptly. Sometimes a simple realignment of expectations and goals is all it takes to breathe new life into interactions, allowing both individuals to prosper and evolve together. Take Sarah, for example, a software developer who felt unfulfilled and unsupported in her five-year friendship with Lucy. Despite their long history, Sarah realized that their interactions had become a series of complaints and superficial exchanges without encouragement or acknowledgement of each other's professional milestones. After much reflection, Sarah decided to address these issues openly with Lucy. Their conversation opened up a new chapter in their friendship one where they actively shared resources, celebrated each other's successes, and provided constructive feedback, turning their stagnant relationship into a thriving source of mutual inspiration and support. Let's ponder this. How often do we settle for the familiar, fearing the discomfort of addressing the hard truths in our relationships? By choosing to revitalize these essential connections, we not only enhance our personal growth, but also ignite a positive change in others' lives, aligning our relationships more closely with our true values and aspirations. This story of transformation underscores a powerful lesson. Relationships should be a source of inspiration, not obligation. They should elevate our spirits and encourage us to pursue our deepest dreams. If you find yourself in a relationship that feels more draining than enriching, consider this a sign to take action. Remember, 
Every step you take to foster growth and support in your relationships is a step towards a more fulfilling and authentic life. Number 9. Constant Self-Centeredness In the realm of relationships, the delicate balance between giving and taking is foundational, reflecting a deep-seated commitment to reciprocity and mutual respect. Imagine constantly being in a relationship where one party persistently prioritizes their needs, overshadowing the needs of others. This is not just a minor hiccup. It's a profound breach of the core principles that keep relationships healthy and equitable. Stoicism a philosophy that holds moderation and fairness in high regard, clearly contradicts such behavior. It champions the importance of justice and emotional equilibrium, advocating that each individual should contribute to and benefit from relationships equally. When these values are ignored, the foundation of any relationship starts to crumble, leading to a dynamic that is both unbalanced and unsustainable. Now you might wonder, what does one do when faced with persistent selfishness? First, it's crucial to recognize and address these behaviors. This could mean initiating an honest dialogue about expectations and needs, or perhaps reassessing the relationship dynamics altogether. It's about finding a way to restore balance, ensuring that both parties feel valued and respected. Sometimes, setting clear boundaries or even reevaluating the relationship's future might be necessary. Such steps not only protect the individual integrity of each person involved, but also fortify the relationship, allowing it to grow in a direction that is more aligned with stoic ideals of justice and virtue. Consider the words of Marcus Aurelius, a prominent stoic philosopher, who said, What is not good for the swarm is not good for the bee. If a relationship consistently fails to be good for both individuals involved, how can it possibly be conducive to personal or collective development? Think about your own relationships. Are there signs of persistent selfishness? How do these dynamics affect your sense of peace and your ability to practice virtue? What steps can you take to foster an environment where altruism and mutual consideration are not just encouraged, but expected? Reflecting on these questions might not only provide clarity, but could also empower you to make decisions that align with your deepest values. This approach, rooted in Stoic principles, not only nurtures personal growth but also enhances the quality of our relationships, making them more balanced and fulfilling for everyone involved. Thank you for staying with us. Have you ever had to cut ties with someone in your life? How did Stoicism guide or support your decision during that process? If you're not sure what to comment, maybe start by sharing whether you've experienced a situation where ending a relationship or contact felt necessary for your well-being or growth. Number 10. Harmful Dialogue In the realm of human relationships, communication serves as the cornerstone, shaping the depth and quality of our interactions. The ancient Stoics, advocates for harmony and balance, emphasized the transformative power of words in nurturing or negating bonds between individuals. When communication takes a turn towards consistent criticism, negativity, or destructiveness, the ripple effects are profound, impacting our emotional stability and serenity. Marcus Aurelius, a revered Stoic philosopher, once noted, The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Therefore, guard accordingly and take care that you entertain no notions unsuitable to virtue and reasonable nature. This wisdom underscores the necessity for uplifting and constructive communication, aimed at fostering growth and well-being. A pattern of interaction that perpetually sows discord and misunderstanding is a clear indicator that changes are imperative. Such toxic dynamics not only undermine mutual trust and respect, but can also lead to emotional exhaustion, frustration, and a gradual distancing between individuals. In environments where words are wielded to diminish rather than empower, the very essence of communication, to connect and enrich lives, is lost. It is vital, then, to recognize these destructive patterns and confront them head-on. This might mean setting clear norms for interactions that shun negativity and promote open, respectful dialogue. 
In some scenarios, the involvement of a mediator or counselor can be instrumental in steering conversations towards a more positive and fruitful direction. Embracing constructive communication is not merely a tactical choice, but a profound investment in the emotional well-being of all parties and the overall health of the relationship. By fostering an atmosphere where every voice is heard, respected, and valued, we align with the Stoic principle of enhancing life through virtuous interactions. Epictetus, another Stoic luminary, advised, Make the best use of what is in your power, and take the rest as it happens. Applying this philosophy, changing destructive communication patterns to constructive ones becomes essential for sustaining lasting and meaningful relationships and ensuring they remain sources of mutual support and growth. In today's fast-paced, often impersonal world, the art of meaningful communication is more crucial than ever. By applying these ancient principles to modern interactions, we not only preserve our inner peace but also contribute to a healthier, more empathetic society. Let us then strive to cultivate communications that build rather than break, that heal rather than hurt, ensuring that our relationships are robust foundations of support and mutual growth. Number 11. Neglect of Personal Requirements In every relationship, mutual respect and attention to each person's needs and boundaries are not just nice to have. They are crucial for fostering healthy, balanced interactions. When these needs are frequently overlooked, it's not just a minor oversight. It's a profound disrespect that can shake the very foundations of one's dignity and inner peace. Stoicism teaches us that the mutual exchange of respect is essential, not merely out of politeness but as a fundamental element of practicing virtue and maintaining emotional well-being. Imagine being in a relationship where your voice seems to vanish into thin air, your needs and boundaries constantly dismissed. This relentless disregard can make you feel invisible and insignificant, damaging not only your self-esteem, but also hindering your ability to lead a life aligned with your values. It stunts your growth, limiting your potential to live authentically and fully. If you find yourself in such a dynamic, it's imperative to address it. Communicating your needs clearly and establishing firm boundaries is not an act of selfishness, but a vital step towards safeguarding your dignity and fostering a climate of mutual respect. Sometimes, it might even be necessary to take a hard look at your relationships and make tough decisions. Can you continue to grow and thrive in this environment? Or is it time to step away and seek spaces where your needs are not just recognized but valued? Let me tell you about Alex, a friend who found himself constantly sidelined in group projects at work. His ideas were overlooked, and his contributions were minimized, not out of malice but due to a workplace culture that didn't value his quiet, thoughtful approach. Stoicism helped him recognize his worth and the importance of being heard. Alex started by expressing his concerns clearly and setting boundaries about how he expected his contributions to be treated. Over time, he realized that the best step for his personal and professional growth was to seek a new environment where his approach was appreciated, leading to a significant boost in his career and personal happiness. Number 12. Lack of Shared Responsibility In any relationship, mutual accountability holds a crucial role, serving as the bedrock upon which trust and balance are built. Imagine a scenario where this essential element is missing, where one person consistently shirks their responsibilities, leaving the other to bear the brunt of faults and conflicts alone. This not only creates a palpable imbalance, but also breeds a deep sense of injustice. Such behavior starkly contradicts the Stoic principles of honesty and justice, which teach us to own our actions and their repercussions fully. When accountability is absent, it forces one partner into an overcompensating role often leading to resentment and frustration. This disproportionate burden can gradually chip away at the very foundation of trust and respect that sustains the relationship. As Marcus Aurelius wisely stated, just as nature takes every obstacle, every impediment, and works around it, turns it to its purposes, incorporates it into itself, so too, 
a rational being can turn each setback into raw material and use it to achieve its goal. In relationships, this means addressing issues head on and fostering an environment where open communication thrives. How then can one ensure that mutual accountability is not just a concept, but a practiced reality? It starts with honest self-assessment and the willingness to communicate openly about one's actions and their consequences, acknowledging mistakes, offering sincere apologies, and striving to correct problematic behaviors are all steps in this direction. This commitment to accountability does not merely align with Stoic teachings. It vitalizes the relationship, fortifying its structure with trust and fairness. But what happens when efforts to foster accountability fail? If you find yourself constantly compensating for someone else's lack of responsibility, ask yourself, is this imbalance something I can accept long-term? This question is not just rhetorical. It invites you to reflect deeply on the dynamics of your relationships and to consider whether they align with the stoic ideals of justice and balance. Promoting mutual accountability doesn't just preserve relationships, it transforms them, creating a fair and supportive environment where all parties can grow and thrive. By integrating these principles into our interactions, we not only adhere to Stoic wisdom, but also enhance our connections with others, making them more equitable and resilient. Therefore, it's imperative to recognize when it's time to reassess our relationships based on these criteria. Cutting ties is never easy, but in the pursuit of personal peace and fairness, it sometimes becomes necessary. Reflect on this. Are you holding on to a relationship that consistently undermines your growth and balance? If so, what steps will you take to restore or, if needed, release yourself from this imbalance? Let us know in the comment below. Number 13. Persistent Overstepping of Limits In navigating the intricate dynamics of relationships, it becomes essential to recognize when our personal boundaries are not merely being tested, but blatantly disregarded. This is particularly significant within the realm of Stoicism, a philosophy that places immense value on self-control and respect for oneself and others. Marcus Aurelius, a sage of Stoicism, once said, Whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I am about to criticize? This reflection is not about turning the blame on ourselves, but about understanding the importance of boundaries and mutual respect. The issue of boundary violation strikes a profound chord. If an individual constantly ignores or breaches your clearly communicated boundaries, it illuminates a disturbing truth. They do not hold your comfort or autonomy in high regard. This could manifest in a variety of distressing behaviors, ignoring your pleas for personal space, incessantly forcing you into situations that make you uncomfortable or showing a blatant disregard for your emotional or physical limits. Such repeated violations are not just minor infractions but significant breaches that compel us to reassess the viability of continuing such relationships. Cutting ties in this case isn't an act of impulsiveness but a necessary step to safeguard one's dignity and emotional health. It echoes the stoic principle of focusing on what is within our control, our actions and responses. In today's fast-paced world, where the lines between personal and professional often blur, understanding when to sever ties becomes crucial. It's about preserving not just peace of mind but also our core values. As we move forward, let this understanding be your guide. Respect for boundaries is not optional in any healthy relationship it is essential. By adhering to this principle, you not only protect yourself, but also cultivate an environment where respect and understanding flourish. This isn't just wisdom from ancient philosophy. It's timeless advice for living well in our modern world. Number 14. Unreciprocated Actions in the Stoic philosophy, relationships are held to a high standard of mutual respect and support. This belief underscores the importance of reciprocity in our connections with others. 
When this reciprocity is missing, it often presents as a pattern in which your efforts, care, and emotional investment seem to vanish into a void, with little to nothing coming back your way. Such situations might leave you feeling undervalued or exploited, a stark contrast to the stoic ideal of relationships fostering mutual growth and enrichment. Imagine yourself in a situation where, despite your best efforts, the person on the other end remains consistently unresponsive or indifferent to your needs. You might start to question the validity of continuing such a one-sided engagement. For instance, let's consider Sarah, a young professional who found herself always ready to assist her colleague, Mark, with challenging projects. Despite her support, Mark never seemed to acknowledge her contributions or offer his help when she needed it. This ongoing lack of reciprocity made Sarah feel more like a tool than a teammate. After much reflection, influenced by stoic teachings, she decided to shift her efforts towards relationships that promised mutual respect and support. Do you ever find yourself in relationships where you are the only one making efforts? It's essential to recognize these patterns and ask yourself whether these connections deprive you of emotional energy rather than enriching your life. Stoicism teaches us that wisdom lies in nurturing bonds that are balanced and beneficial, not in enduring those that drain us. By identifying and addressing the lack of reciprocity, you are not only respecting your value but also adhering to a stoic approach to relationships. As you reflect on your relationships, consider whether they align with the stoic values of mutual respect and support. If not, it might be time to reassess these connections. Remember, choosing to step away from non-reciprocal relationships isn't about giving up on people. It's about focusing on relationships that truly matter and nurture your growth. How will you ensure your relationships reflect the balance and mutual respect you deserve? In closing, if your efforts in a relationship consistently go unreciprocated, it might be a clear signal to reevaluate your involvement. Protecting your emotional well being and seeking equitable, supportive relationships align with the stoic pursuit of a harmonious and fulfilling life. Remember, every interaction should contribute positively to your life's journey. As we close this discussion on the crucial signs that may indicate it's time to sever ties for your mental and emotional well being, remember, that being proactive about who you allow in your life is a testament to your commitment to living a stoic and harmonious life. Reflect on these signs and take thoughtful actions that honor your peace and dignity. If you found this video enlightening and wish to continue exploring the profound lessons of stoicism with us, please like, share, and subscribe to Stoic in Your Life. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to ensure you never miss our upcoming videos. Your engagement helps us grow and continue providing valuable insights. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep striving for wisdom and virtue in all aspects of your life.